Now that we've finished the object complements for adjectives, we're going to start working on the object complement clauses for verbs. And they start at clauses 141 and go down through... Okay, subject complement clauses start at 66. So let's go to clauses 141. There's nothing to import from that other word document for these sentences. So clauses 141. This is saying John wanted to read that book. So we can click on want and edit its theta grid adjustment rule. And for these, we can generally use the simple output. Okay, uh, so first, okay, so TBTA knows want sense B takes an object complement. And want sense B, uh, the object complement clause, the agent is co-referential with the agent in the main clause, the matrix clause. So when we say simple comp, simple, when we say simple output, it'll show us a dialogue first with all of the noun phrase arguments that are, th that are outside the complement clause. So in this case, there's only one, the agent, and we don't want to do anything here. So we can say, okay, now it shows us another dialog, and we can work on what's inside the complement clause. So in English, this want doesn't take a complementizer, so we'll leave it blank. This want doesn't use subject raised. Um, we'll talk about an example with this in a minute. Okay, subject noun surface realization. John wanted to read that book. So subject surface, the subject of the complement clause is always big pro. We don't say John wanted John to read that book. Uh, there's nothing in the surface for that agent. Verbs target tense and form is too infinitive. So we say OK, and it does that for us. Put in a comment, turn on the rule. John wanted to read that book. Generated text is identical to the documents. Let's save it. John decided to read that book. It's essentially the same thing. Edit this verb's data grid adjustment rule. Simple output. So we see the agent noun phrase, but we don't want to do anything. For the complement clause, there is no complementizer. It's not subject raised. Uh, this will be big pro. This will be to infinitive. Um, the sense of decide, the king decided to choose some officials. We have another sense of decide that for s a sentence like, Mary decided that John should read that book. That's a different sense of decide. So in that, in that sense's theta grid adjustment rule, we wouldn't set this to big pro or the two, two infinitive. Uh, Mary decided that John should read that book. That's a completely different verb in our system with its own theta grid adjustment rule. John decided to read that book. Let's save it. Next one. John agreed to read that book. Let's go to the theta grid adjustment rule. Uh, simple output. We don't want to do anything to the agent. John agreed. None of this. Uh, big pro. And two. By the way, once you've done that, if you say simple output, uh, that will erase this. So you're starting all over. If we do this again now, you see this was erased. It's starting from scratch again. So big pro to infinitive. John agreed to read that book. Let's save it. John tried to read that book. Nothing for the agent non phrase, no complementizer, no subject raised. Big pro, to infinitive. Save it. Next one. John knows how to read that book. Um, for this one, let's set these manually just to make sure you know how. Um, okay, we can say features here, big pro. 
features here, which are infinitive. Some people might say that how is actually the complementizer. Um, we've analyzed how as a post-verbal modifier, which is fine. Either way is fine. We'll get the same result. Generated text is identical. Let's save it. John thinks that Mary read that book, or John thought that Mary read that book. Now this one is a little bit different. There's a complementizer. Uh, nothing for the. This is for the matrix and agent NP again. Okay, there is a complementizer. John thought that. Okay, it's not subject raised. Uh, We'll have an example with this in a minute. John thought that Mary, so we don't want Big Pro, read that book. The verb here is fully inflected, so we'll leave this alone. John thought that Mary might read that book. John thought that Mary should have read that book. This is fully inflected, so we'll leave that alone. Generated text is identical. Let's save it. John believed that Mary read that book. Simple output, nothing for the matrix agent. John believed that, we want a complementizer. We don't want to set this big to, to big pro, we don't want to set this to two infinitive or anything. John believed that Mary read that book. John said that Mary read that book. Okay, this one takes an optional destination noun phrase. John said to Mary that Susan read that book, or something like that. So for simple output, now there's the agent and the destination. Uh, everything, all of the noun phrase arguments that precede the complement clause are here. So for the destination, we want to say oblique one, John said to Mary, and we'll have the preposition to. Now this dialogue is for the complement clause. John said to Mary that, we want a complementizer. Uh, we don't want this subject raised. We don't want this to be big pro. We don't want this to be a two infinitive. John said that Mary read that book. Generated text is identical. John knows, John knew that Mary read that book. Okay. John knew that. We don't want to do anything to the matrix now, agent now phrase. Subject raised, no. Big pro, no. To infinitive, no. John knew that Mary read that book. Let's save it. John wanted Mary to read that book. So this is a different sense of want. Uh, this, this is now when you desire that someone else do something. John wants Mary to read that book. Okay, we don't, don't want to do anything to the agent noun phrase, the matrix agent. Okay, John wanted Mary to read that book. There is no complementizer. Now here it is subject raised. And the way we know that in English, if this were a pronoun, we would say John wanted her to read that book. We wouldn't say John wanted she to read that book. We'd say John wanted her. So that means the agent of the complement clause has been raised out and is now functioning. It's now marked as the object of want. So this is now the patient. Mary is now the patient. It's so English linguists call it subject raised. So this is automatically set to pro. John wanted Mary to read that book. Now when it's subject raised, you can see this is copied out and it's marked as the patient and the object. And this is automatically set to big pro. Generated text is identical. Let's save it. 
John asked Mary to read that book. Okay, so ask takes a patient, and it also takes an agent in here. John asked Mary, Mary read that book. We won't do anything here. We don't want to complimentize her. We don't want to say subject raised for this verb, because if we did, it would be copied out and it would become another patient. So we won't say subject raised. We will say big pro, and we'll say to infinitive. Generated text is identical. Let's save it. John told Mary to read that book. So the patient, so tell, takes a patient noun phrase, and the referent in the patient noun phrase will be the same as the referent in the agent noun phrase of the complement clause. Okay, we won't do anything to either the agent or the patient. We don't have a complementizer. We don't want to say subject raised. We will say big pro and to infinitive. Generated text is identical. John caused Mary to read that book. Now this takes two other noun phrases. Let's see, John caused the official to like Daniel. With the donkey's bones, Samson caused those men to become like donkeys in Judges 15, 16. So there can be an instrument noun phrase. Jonah 4, 6, Yahweh caused a plant to grow for Jonah. Okay, this instrument, we put it at the beginning, with the donkey's bone, Samson caused those men to become like donkeys. We could also say, Samson caused those men to become like donkeys with a donkey's bone. Uh, either one would be fine. Let's say, simple output. So now we see the three noun phrases that are outside of the complement clause. We don't do anything to the patient. For the instrument, let's say it's oblique one. Uh, so it'll come after the complement clause. This will be with. The beneficiary, we'll call it oblique two, oh, it? and it will be the preposition four. Okay, for the complement clause, John caused Mary to read that book. If this were a pronoun, we would say John caused her. So it is subject raised. There's no complementizer. It is subject raised. And this will be a two infinitive. John caused Mary to read that book. Let's save it. John made Mary read that book. Okay, here, okay, there is no patient noun phrase. So nothing for the agent. Okay, there is no complementizer. It is subject raised. John made her read that book. For the verbs, target tense, and form, uh, we want a bare stem a bare stem infinitive. Uh, we can't do that here. Let's say OK, and we'll save that much. On the features here, we want to set this to a bare stem, but there isn't one yet. So we can say feature set, go to verbs, target tense and form. get the bare stem infinitive yet, 
but we've, we've set that feature value. John made Mary, and Mary has been subject raised, uh, if we look here, inserted by theta grid adjustment rule, theta grid ad adjustments for events, uh, et cetera, et cetera, for make sense B, that's the one we just worked on. Okay, we want John made Mary read that book. No, it did get the bare stem infinitive. Um, okay, target tense and form is bare stem infinitive. Okay, so it started with the stem. But just to be certain, I want to go to this rule, our phrase builder rule, and we have a section for infinitives. I want to add one more line for the bare stem infinitive that will just choose the stem. Now if we rest our cursor here, uh, you see down there, read went to read by spell out rule of verbs, generic rule one, build all VPs, layer one, row 20, bare stem infinitive. So now we can be certain this will have just the stem. Okay, uh, that's enough for this video. We'll, we'll finish the complement clauses in the next video.